hi friends welcome back so in this video i will be discussing some of the important questions related to user acceptance testing especially people who are trying to attain any uit testing role then this video will be very useful the first entry question would be what is user acceptance testing user acceptance testing is also another kind of application testing if you can say and also we can also call it as a end user testing this is also another phase in the software development the way we have a system testing integration testing and we have a unit testing similarly we have user acceptance testing is also one of the phase in the software development life cycle and the main purpose of this user acceptance testing is this is going to be tested by the customer itself by the real people to the real world then what is the difference between the user acceptance testing and a pre uat the pre uat normally this type of testing will be done by the tester from login to logout from end to end perspective as part of uat the client tester or end user who are going to perform the uat whether that really satisfies the business requirement based on that they are going to sign up from the uat perspective then who writes the uat test cases the test cases normally written for uat by the project team members from the business uh, group who is having a good understanding on the overall uh, system functionalities plus the business processes as well whoever know the complete uh, integrity of business processes and system functionality they would be writing the uat test cases especially the business analyst or a functional lead from the client side they would be writing the uat test cases what are the risk in uat the major risk is the end users are sometime too busy in performing user acceptance testing or sometime because they are going to start at the end of the phase the overall process might get delayed because of that then the second one is unstable uat environment especially uat environment will be of a totally a different environment which required to be set up and post that the uat testing will be done there and the second uh, major risk is inadequate testing data in uat environment there should be a adequate test data should be available in order to complete the uat fourth risk we may anticipate is incorrect software versions especially when there is a integration or when there is a multiple uh, products or multiple software versions are getting integrated then we may see this kind of uh, risk we may anticipate while doing uh, uat the fifth one is performing uat we should try to simulate or emulate similar to the production environment we are seeing sometime there are a lot of failures also when we trying to simulate to the production environment that and also lack of human resources especially in order to perform uat we would be required a uh, good resource who is having uh, business process knowledge as well as function knowledge getting that kind of resources also is not very easy these days what are the key assumption in uat the key assumption uh, we have to consider while testing uh, uat is the first assumption would be the software testing which is done by the testing team should completed without having any outstanding uh, critical defect that is the first assumptions we normally we make whenever we are taking care of user acceptance testing the second one is the uat test environment should be available made available for uat and the third assumption is all the configuration test data has been provided as applied into the environment all the system and desktop requirement for the uat testers are identified and has been provided with the, all the prerequisite software applications are installed then the fifth assumption is subject matter experts are available as in when the uat testing is in progress so whenever somebody gets an inquiry or any concern the subject matter expert should be made available that they can provide the solution in a quicker manner is there any metrics where we will be validating the uat success the formula is something like this if you can see right uat success is nothing but the overall the uat defects logged during uat phase divided by uat defects plus other defects the defects could be coming from development testing everybody multiply by 100 next question is 
is UAT and functional testing is one and the same. The functional testing we normally concentrated on the functional perspective which is more of a system testing which is done by a software tester internally as part of software development process. But user acceptance testing is rather done by the business group or business department itself. Then what is the difference between user acceptance testing and OAT? OAT is nothing but operational acceptance testing. Normally operational acceptance testing which we normally occurs after we perform OAT. OAT normally employs the real user in accessing and using the system in live state. Is end-to-end -end testing is same as acceptance testing? End-to-end -end testing is normally as we discussed earlier it is done by the testing team but user acceptance is done by the business end user and the perspective of the testing in both the places is totally different end-to-end -end and UAT but there could be slight uh, duplication might be there in uh, while performing uh, both the kind of testing. So overall the perspectives are totally different when we are, when they are doing end to end and uh, user acceptance testing. Because perspective is totally different then now kind of defects which we get or bugs we get will also be different as part of end to end or UAT. Then what comes after UAT testing? Once the uh, UAT execution is over there could be many defects we might have logged where developers will be fixing those uh, defects and it get uh, re-verified UAT is successful then UAT team would be signing off once they sign up then this overall product or an application would be ready for a deployment what does a UAT analyst do the main role of UAT analyst is you will be reviewing and understanding the defects logged by their team members basically they will review all the defects then they will perform the overall triage meeting with uh, different people and gather information do a troubleshooting analyzing of various issues to understand whether the issue is really an issue or is it an enhancement or a user error. The UAT analyst would be doing lot of this kind of analysis as part of their day-to-day -day job. So what are the key UAT deliverable? The UAT deliverables are something like this. The first one is UAT test plan where we will be defining completely overall test planning activities plus test strategy and the second one is UAT scenarios will be written there based on the user stories. We will be writing the test cases as well. So executions are done we will be logging the defects as well and also we will be signing off the overall UAT test that is also another deliverable which we normally do as part of the UAT testing. Then how long the UAT test takes uh, two to four weeks of overall UAT testing is more than sufficient. Sometime it, it may happen two weeks or sometime maximum four weeks based on the complexity involved in the applications. After that uh, some additional one week of contingency also we should keep in order to retest or uh, if we find any issues then it should get resolved before we are deploying into the production environment. So what is the key difference between a production and a UAT environment? The UAT will be getting done in a staging environment or similar to the production environment or a QA environment but production environment is totally a different set of environment where the product is going to go live there. 